Y'all yeah. enjoy trash talking yeah. yourselves? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 Baltimore is a city that runs on two things, hope and hoops. Games are flooded with fans, legends are made, and dreams become real. Here, ball truly is life. Baltimore is home to some of the greatest basketball teams and players of all time. The Baltimore basketball scene launched careers of Muggsy Bogues, Will Barton, David Wingate, and Reggie Lewis. They and dozens of other NBA stars got their start playing street ball in Baltimore's legendary courts. But these stars only tell part of the hoop story. There are heated crosstown rivalries, youth teams that make national headlines, and stories of triumph and redemption. I wanted to take a closer look and see what makes Baltimore a basketball city unlike any other. First, I'm headed to the East Side's Hoops headquarters, the Dome. We're here at the Dome, an iconic spot for basketball in East Baltimore. It's also one of the toughest and most competitive courts in the country. The reputation here is, if you have game, then you can play. The Dome means a lot to Baltimore Pearl. And the Dome is always somewhere that I always thought in my mind, like, I gotta play it. I mean, every time you come here, you're gonna get a show. That's the part of the Dome, like, you never know who's coming. A lot of Baltimore's legendary hoopers are from the east side. So we're heading to the Dome, which UA helped renovate in 2012, turning this iconic court into a basketball haven designed to motivate kids to dream big, stay active, and out of trouble. Breaking ankles on this court is a rite of passage for a lot of hoopers. So I wanted to call in two East Side legends, Akil Carr and Terry Hosey, to talk to me about the significance of the court, how they got their start, and what makes the East Side such an incubator for basketball superstars. Around Baltimore, the East Side of Phenom, Akil Carr, is a household name. Akil Carr, man, he got the total pack, man. A god, he's only probably about five, six, but he got it all. He's dynamite, athletic. He can shoot it. His handles are crazy. He's tough. Plays defense. So I definitely think he's the next one. During his high school days, Akil Carr became a local legend in town. His high-flying dunks and lightning speed make people line up around the corner to witness the magic of this 5'6 superstar. He was known as the Crime Stopper. When he played, the crime rate in Baltimore dropped significantly. Everyone was simply too busy watching Akil to get into any trouble. I caught up with Akil at the Dome to learn about how he became the hometown hero known as the Crime Stopper. And I know you get asked this a lot, but let's talk about how that name came about, how that name came to be, the Crime Stopper. Oh, man, my 10th grade year, we was playing against Baltimore City College. Right. I mean, they had great players in their team, Jordan Lakeman, uh, Nick Faust. Playing against them was a big rival game. Nobody was outside. Everybody came to see me play, and I had a great game. Right, I right, even right. got a dunk on Nick Faust, so, oh, yeah. and he's 6'6". Six, six. News show back the clips, they like, yeah, the crime stopper. Because they like, yeah, the value of the crime went down while he was on the court. When I had games, it always been going down, so I took the nickname. At the end of the day, I, I want the crime to stop. I don't, I don't want to be no crime. Yeah. Like, if I can play basketball 24 7, everybody can come. Yeah, that's what yeah, I do. Like, that, that, that's, that'll that's be right perfect. That's mm -hmm. right. Akil was a phenomenon, unlike anything Baltimore had ever seen. As early as his sophomore year in high school, he was getting offers to play overseas and was quickly becoming one of the hottest prospects in the country. After his junior year, he committed to play at Seton Hall, but ultimately turned it down to play in China. The opportunity allowed him to support his family and newborn girl. However, his time in China lasted only a few games and he bounced around from teams in Europe, Canada, and the G League. Now he's back in Baltimore, eager to prove he still has what it takes. Now, for as far as a kill car, where is basketball taking you now? Well, like, what's in store for you? I mean, basketball, like for, for me, basketball took me a lot of places right now. Like coming from Baltimore, over east anyway, like I didn't think this ball was gonna take me all across the world just to see all these nice things and stuff. I never thought of that. While the whole city was watching the kill, he was watching Terry Hosey. He's another legend from the East Side who also earned his stripes at the Dome. Yeah, I'm right back. I've been doing right back since you was a kid. Yeah. 
Terry Hosley is one of the biggest names in Baltimore basketball, regularly racking up 40 and 50 point games in leagues all across the city. Being from East Baltimore, playing here with the crowd is just the showmanship. Okay, you got the dribbling skill, you got the scoring ability, you got the confidence, now you're not afraid. It's all about being able to show within the moment. He's a legend of the East Side, where he got his start playing in AAU and neighborhood leagues over a decade ago. The rivalry between the East Side and the West Side is an integral part of the fabric of the city's basketball culture. Their notorious showdowns have turned rookies into household names virtually overnight. Nearly everyone from around the city would come to watch the famous pickup games to see who was really that deal. Baltimore is a small city. Yeah. But the basketball aspect of it is big. You know, it's like sometimes they split things from East West. The whole East Baltimore can say, yeah, Terry is that deal. But you got the West Baltimore that might say, uh, Omar Strong is that deal, and yeah. I, you know, I don't really know. But then the West Side sees you, and they're like, oh, well, oh, he really is that deal. Then the East Side see him, and it's like, when you get that respect from all over the city, right. there's, there's nothing like it. So much love when you walk into a gym or walk into a league, you know what I mean? Terry won the respect of the court on the East Side. But there's a new crop of young players working hard to gain the love of their city. To get a glimpse of the other side of Baltimore, we're heading to West Baltimore to check out one of his top courts and meet the next generation of competitors. Yeah, East, East got a little more grit with them, I can say that. The West Baltimore, they got some ballers. And they gonna let you know they can play just as well. And East Baltimore like scrappy, talk yeah. trash, all that. West Baltimore kids, they gonna, they gonna let you know they can play. Right. And they gonna prove it out on the court without right. saying anything. While the East side has a dome, the West has Cloverdale courts. A Baltimore hoop staple for almost 60 years. This is one of the spots where history is made on the west side. I met with up-and-comers from St. Francis and Team Thrill on this iconic court to talk about life as rising stars in a city obsessed with the game. St. Francis Academy's boys and girls basketball teams are also dominating Baltimore's courts and changing lives. The independent Catholic high school serves as an agent of positive change within the community. When they see St. Francis, they know it's wood. We're talking to Angel Reese, Nia Cloudin, Delisha Penning, and Anaya Gordine. They're some of the star players on the girls' basketball team that have become a national powerhouse. In Baltimore, it's more than just a boys' game. I think St. Francis has a lot of the Baltimore's talent from around the area. I think it's hard, rough, scrappy. Right. Yeah, a lot of trash talk, too. Yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of trash talk. Clapping faces, yeah. So as far as trash talk, I mean, do you guys, you guys partake in that, yeah. too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You got a little bit of that, yeah. Everyone in Baltimore knows that talking mess is almost as important as having a nice jumper. Of course, only if you can back it up. The ballers I talked to might not have been able to agree on whether the east side or the west side was better, but they all agreed that trash talk is essential to the Baltimore hoop culture. And when you go to a home game, you know you're gonna get a show. So how are the home games like for you guys? They live. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. from the school come out. Yeah. Everybody yeah. come out. Everybody everybody in, everybody, especially in big games, everybody in the city the really comes out. You post it, everybody here. These home games bring the city together to celebrate their teams. And much like Akil Carr in his crime stopping days, the young men on Team Thrill are doing their part to uplift the city and get people off the streets and into the stands. One in four Baltimore residents lives in poverty. For those who play here, Basketball is an alternative to a life of crime and drugs that is widespread throughout the city. My biggest goal is to make it to the NBA and hopefully give back to the people that helped me when I was young so I can give back to them and help them when they need it. Denver Nuggets guard Will Barton is using his success to improve the lives of kids in his hometown. Will the Thrill founded Team Thrill a basketball program designed to help student athletes succeed both on the court and in the classroom. He's an NBA player, but he's never been too big for the community, too big to give back. Like, he takes time out to let kids take, he takes a picture with everybody. Today, we have a few players with us. James Bishop, Jordan Tolles, Bass Diop, Ahmad Harrison, and Jairus Walker. 
Like, what's Team Thrill? You know, what, what's, what's that mean to y'all? Something I really admired was PTF, what Will Walton always says, protect the family. It's a family, just a brotherhood. We all came together. Uh, we all love each other. We love playing with each other. So that's what we do it for. We just do it for each other when we go out and play on the court. One of the things that makes Team Thrill so successful is their leadership. When Will Barton finally achieved his dream of making it to the big leagues, he made it a priority to show the youth of his hometown how to succeed in a positive way. This included bringing on coach Mookie Dobbins, who the kids see as more than just a mentor. If we're talking about Team Thrill, then we got to talk about coach. We got to talk about Mookie, you know? So, what, well, I mean, what's, what's Mookie mean to the team and, and you? He's really a humble guy. He really sacrifices a lot for, for the kids. If he, if he had everything, he'll sacrifice. Mookie's kind of like a, a uncle to me. Cause him and my dad grew up together, so it's like that relationship is like it's more it's more than basketball with him. So he wants the best of me, just like my father would want the best of me. With community leaders like Coach Mookie and Will Barton, these young men are learning how to carry themselves on and off the court. I found that basketball gives the city's youth an avenue to strive for positivity, and for James, Jarris, Ahmad, Bass, and Jordan. Giving back to your city is always a priority. What's your hopes, dreams, and goals in the sport of basketball? Just to get to the highest level. First, I got to get through high school, then college. Work hard every day. Your hopes and dreams, get a scholarship for wherever you can. Right. Hope you get to the NBA and help your family, support them, support the people who help you get to where you are and just give back. Me, I just want to make sure my mom and my father won't have to work anymore. That's all I want to do. I just want to take basketball to another level as far as me providing for my family or even starting starting some type of business or a training. Something to give back and then where they'll just make those connections to where I can make that happen. Because that makes them want to stay out of trouble, it makes them want to do something good because they know they're representing something other than themselves, something bigger than themselves and, and it's the city. I knew basketball was huge in Baltimore. But the way it's ingrained in the community showed me a whole new side to the game. Whether you're from the east side or the west side, male or female, gearing up for college ball or trying to break into the NBA, basketball is more than what happens on the court. The players I met embodied the talent, grit, and unwillingness to give up that this city instilled in its Hoopers. I'm never giving up. I mean, the main goal is still to make it to the NBA because I'm still young, so I'm still working. I'm never giving up. You know, failure is not an option for me. So right now, I'm just still grinding, like taking my time. 